So a few ideas from my resources for how we can encourage reasoning in data handling. Um, first of all, this is from IC Reasoning Year 4. If we're actually asking children to take readings from bar graphs, I would first of all strip all the contextual information away just to home in on the skill of actually reading the value of the bars. If that's the thing we're really focusing on, make that the only thing children have to think about, like in this example. Then a technique that I like to use is for children to match the heading to the correct graph. Again, we don't need to actually take any readings here. Um, let me give you a moment to consider this example. So here for children to recognize favorite colors of the children in school, that'll just be a random pattern. Whereas average temperature per month in London, it will start lower at the beginning of the year, it will increase and decrease. And therefore that must be the top graph. You might wanna pause this, the video here to consider these examples. Can you match the heading to the graph and the reasoning that's required? And the kind of points that I might raise, the number of children in each class will be relatively similar. Um, between class to class, that's more likely to be the bottom right example. Shoe size for children in year five and six, again, generally few children will have smaller feet. There'll be more in the middle and then fewer will, will have larger feet. So that will be the top left graph. The average age, the age for children in the year five and six class, sorry, the children will either be nine, 10 or 11 years old. So that actually must be only three bars top right whereas favorite fruits will be more of a random um, distribution. That will be like the, the bottom left examples. Great opportunities for reasoning. And that can be extended by this IC problem solving task. So again, you might wanna pause the video, consider these examples, how you match the heading to the graph. So A, graph to show rainfall over a year. Of course, that'd be a line graph, but it'd be, it would be patterned like the, bot the five rather than two, because that will increase and decrease. Um, graph to show whether children are having packed lunch or school dinners. Well, children either have a packed lunch or school dinner, so the pictogram suits there for uh, four. Um, football teams in the class, there'll be no pattern in that graph, so that's example one. There'll be lots of different groups there. Um, if we're looking at the height of a child since, the birth, since birth, that, of course, will be a line graph, and, and it will be a smooth increase. Um, so that will be two as opposed to five. And then number of brothers or sisters will generally have some children will have no siblings. Um, more will generally have one and then the, the amounts will decrease as that increases. So it's getting children to think really analytically there. Um, another technique I could do is produce a graph that is somewhat counterintuitive. You might want to pause this example from IC Reasoning Year 4. So here, the key idea, if we're looking at the number of trains that are late, then actually the higher the bar, the worse performing the train station for children to explore that big idea and, and explore some of the other ideas and the questions there. Now, similarly, I also love using the technique of the slow reveal in data handling also. This is a question from the year six sats. We start by putting white boxes over everything apart from the pie chart and just ask children what they notice here. More of a goal-free example to begin with. Then I might introduce the question, but just cover up the statements. There are a certain number of big cats in the zoo, I've hidden the number, and to ask children, what could those statements be? When they've thought of different possible statements, we can have a look at the actual statements there. And I could ask the children in this instance, which of these statements could already be answered? Um, and we actually see that we can already answer two of those statements. Now, it could be, if I was looking to deepen again, I could ask here, how many big cats could there be in the zoo? Um, before, of course, revealing the number and being able to answer all the questions. Hopefully that gives you lots of ideas for how we can build reasoning into sequences of lessons involving data handling.